London 2012's transformation plans for East London depended on creating the biggest parkland attempted in Britain for over a century. This immense challenge was taken on by landscape architect John Hopkins. It is a chance of a lifetime to work uh, at this scale, to have the money, the responsibility, the, the deadline. And it's the Olympics that gives us that opportunity and is the power behind it. The Olympic Park design that emerged was pioneering. The southern parkland would feature easy access pathways, sweeping lawns and festival gardens. To the north, a vast ecological landscape would create rich and diverse habitats, featuring rare wet woodland and winding rivers. With climate change, we will have uh, much heavier rainfall. So we very consciously, from the beginning, designed the park to be an absorbent park. In periods of heavy rain, the park will manage the water flow to the River Thames, protecting 5,000 homes at risk from flooding. This strategy relied on planting trees and the creation of absorbent wetlands. A hundred and thirty kilometers southwest of Stratford, in Ampfield, Hampshire, horticulturalist Martin Hillier was preparing over two thousand semi-mature trees for the Olympic Park. We've been doing Chelsea Flower Show for well, the last sixty-five years. We've, we've had a goal. The pressure we're feeling is like doing a Chelsea Flower Show every day of the week. The trees would need at least a year to establish on site so the first of over 200 deliveries got underway. They're just tiny 20-year-old saplings, and they've got a long way to go. So all the development here is, is looking towards the future. It's taken decades to nurture these trees from seed, but it takes just moments to plant them in the Olympic Park. Trees will slow the range path to the rivers, but the riverbanks had to be protected from erosion. A hundred and twenty kilometers north of Stratford in Thetford, Norfolk, David Holland had a bioengineered solution. When we first got the call, we were very excited. I think followed then by the realization that we had to grow over 380,000 wetland plants. Individually planting each one would be impossible. So David and his team grew the plants in coconut coir matting, which could be quickly gathered and drained for transport to the park. We can actually now start to envisage the profile and the, the way that the riverbank and the wetlands will look. This will give confidence throughout the world that these bioengineering techniques can be used to increase biodiversity and replace some of these horrible, nasty, hard engineering solutions that have been used for so long. Woodlands and wetlands will create rich, diverse habitats for wildlife and create a new green lung for London, helping to reduce urban heat and cut pollution. The wonderful thing about landscape and landscape architecture is that it looks good on day one, but on year 100, it looks even better.